Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson from Motionworks, back with a short Substance Painter tutorial for you. Now, I've just about finished doing this hot rod, and I had actually already done the flames, but when I'm doing any particular project, I do tend to watch tutorials because I've always tr liked to you know, add to my knowledge and see if I can glean some new tips and techniques that I can integrate into my workflow straight away. And I had already done the flames for the hot rod. I've got them here. Let's see if I can find them. Uh, hot rod flames. I'll just turn these on. And when I did these, I thought, yep, they're looking pretty good. But I've since learned a few better techniques and a better approach for how to do these. And I thought what I'd do is record this as a reference for myself and for you to see if you can learn some new tips and techniques that you can integrate into your workflow. There isn't a whole hell of a lot of information about decals uh, on YouTube. There's a few reasonable tutorials on Substance Painter, but it can be a bit confusing. So let me explain to you what I've learned and hopefully I can uh, explain it in a simplified way so that it's easier to understand. So I'll turn these off and uh, let's get started. So the flames were created in Illustrator. I created them in Illustrator and here in Photoshop I comped them up. This is just the flattened version of the flame. You can see it's a square document. This is actually 4000 by 4000 pixels so it's quite a high res document. So I saved this out as a PNG, being careful to turn the black background off, so using the transparency. That's the, the fill layer. Just put a black background in there and a, a white layer as a clipping mask. And filled that with white, so that's my alpha. And I created a third version, which was the outline. So just like that. And that's also going to be used as an alpha. Okay, so back across here in Substance Painter, you see I've got my, my UVs nicely organized. So I'm going to create a new layer, and this is just a standard layer. And I already have my brush set up. Let's take a look at how I did that. So here's my brush here. Let me just remove both of those and come down to my shelf. Type in flames. See, I've got a few different flames here. I was doing a few tests. So I want the flames 4K. I'm just going to snap that off for a sec. Grab the 4K, drop it down here into base color. Now I'm going to leave roughness and metal turned on. And just hide that for now. There's a few different ways you can paint your decal on. Obviously, you can paint it over here on the 3D object or you can paint it here on the UVs. I find it w helps to have alignment set to UV rather than tangent wrap. So if I choose tangent wrap and I click, you can see it's wrapped and overlapped the other object here. I'll just choose UV and try the same. I get a more predictable positioning of it. And that looks much better. So definitely consider using UVs. Now, I'll click again. Watch what happens to the roughness and the metallic of the red metal below. See how it's all gone dark? That's because we have roughness and metal turned on. And keep in mind, when you're painting like this, once you've clicked to create the paint or the paint stroke, what you see is what you get. And to make any adjustments, you have to undo, make your adjustments down here, click again, and check it again. So standard layers with paint are fairly restricted in that respect. Just keep that in mind when we look at fill layers. Now what if we want to click the color, but we don't want to affect the roughness and the metal? Well, we have to turn that off, so I'll undo again. Turn off roughness and metal. So now we're only going to click color. Okay, so now we've added the color decal. And you can see we've inherited all of the metal and roughness from the layers below.
Notice we are overlapping one of the other objects slightly. So I want to isolate this stroke to just the top of the bonnet here. So to do that, I can add a black mask. That'll hide it. Just change over to polygon mode and I'll click on UVs and just select that. And now that's isolated that to just that UV island. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So I'll just hide that for a sec and create a new one, just a new standard layer. Now, what if we did want to use roughness and metallic for this particular decal? We've already seen that if we do that, then we're going to mess up the roughness and the metallic from the layer below, on the layer below. So in this case, what we have to do is use an alpha, and that's why I created a black and white alpha. So I'll click on that, type in flames, there it is there. And we know it's exactly the same size as the fill. And now if I click, you won't see anything happen to the metallic or roughness below. So notice now that we haven't affected the metallic or roughness below, but inside the flames, we're no longer seeing those flakes, those metal flakes. So we've totally covered those channels below. So if I wanted to, let's come back here. If I wanted to just have color and I wanted to inherit all of that metallic and roughness detail below, then that's perfect. So it's kind of like the flames have been painted onto the base red coat and then the metal flakes and the top coat, the clear coat, have been painted on top, which is, you know, which is perfect. But if I wanted to add some custom flakes to have, you know, different colored flakes within the flames and not inherit the flakes from the car below, from the, uh, from the bonnet below, And in this case, I'd want to completely cover those flakes and I wanted to add, I'd, I'd want to add my own flakes. So here I've got some more flakes on top. A bit hard to see, you can see them there. Now to isolate those flakes so they're just appearing inside the flames, I need to adjust the mat. Now if I was to add a paint effect to this, and start painting, that's not going to give me the result that I expect. Best way to do this is just to group this layer flame flakes, add a black mask, that'll hide everything, and then click on the flames. Just being nice and precise. Making sure, just to zoom in to get that really close. There we go. So now we've isolated those flakes to just be within the flames. So I've got the option now to adjust those to be more suitable within this you know, orange yellow color. So I could come over to my Gaussian spots and just make some adjustments, maybe increase the balance. Might be better if they were more of a, not a red, maybe an, a, a yellow or an orange. Always got to move around to see how it looks and move the light around. I don't think they should be black. Maybe something like that. But you can see I've got full 
the full ability to adjust those independently of the flakes below. Not quite lining up there, but I can always clean that up. It depends how closely I clicked to match the other stamp. Got a levels effect on there, which I could possibly remove. And maybe something like that. And I'll go through and you know adjust that a little bit. Now I'm not too worried about this edge because I'm actually going to put a chrome stroke around the edge there and that should hide that. So that's pretty good. Okay, so how would we do the stroke? Well, for the stroke, we're actually going to use a fill layer. So I'll choose new fill. That's going to cover everything up. I actually want something I've created before. Let's come to the shelf. Type in hot rod. Let's see, now maybe chrome, because I created some chrome before. It's actually Ford Chrome. Let's drag that on. Now, when it was saved as a smart material, it was also saved with a mat. So I just need to remove that. Or mask, I call them mats, but they are called masks in Substance Painter. Okay, so now we've covered that completely with Chrome. Just gonna drag that out. Put that above the flakes. Okay, so now, being that this is a fill layer, we've got full access to color, height, roughness, metal, and normal. But the big difference is here is that when I apply the, uh, the mask to it, when I adjust the mask, I still have full access to all of these values and I can change them at any time. And that's the big difference between standard layers and fill layers. With a standard layer, you saw when we clicked, we basically collapse down all of the roughness and metallic values and to make any changes to that stroke we had to delete it and then change the values and then do it again. But here we can create the stroke and then we can adjust it on the fly. Okay so come back here I'm going to add a black mask okay this is the one that I didn't want one from before so just delete that one Okay, so there's my flames. So this time, I want to choose a different brush. So for my alpha, I'm going to choose the flames 4K stroke. So there we go. So we know it's exactly the same size. And I haven't modified, notice how I haven't modified my brush between each of these different steps. You can see that the brush size is 52.29. If I start playing around with the brush size and I can't remember the original size I used, I might not be able to get this to register perfectly. So it pays just to keep the brush the same and then just switch out the alpha. So I come in and get this as close as I can. There we go. So now if I just press F2, we're going to 3D mode only. Now you can see that we have the stroke around the flames and it's revealing that chrome, which is really nice. I have probably come a little bit too close to the edge here, which I'd have to adjust. As I mentioned, the great thing about using the fill layer is that we have the option to make adjustments after the stroke has been created. So I could come in and change the chrome color Maybe to a, really, you know, a red. That looks pretty nice, doesn't it? And I have full control over the roughness and the metallic values, which is really nice. 
and I'd also probably want to add a separate fill layer with just the roughness channel activated so I could create another clear coat nice and shiny over all of these layers. So that's something else to keep in mind. Now something to keep in mind is that we painted the, the colored decal using a standard layer. You could also apply it using a fill layer, but you can't stamp it on. Let's take a look. So let me just hide these and create another fill layer. So here in the fill layer, if I just choose the Flames 4K and take it down to base color, this is basically just dropped that image in and I can just hold down shift and I can scale that, just turn off tiling and I can position it this way. Just like this. And this is actually how I did the flames originally. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward way to work, but there are some limitations. First limitation is it's much harder for me to do multiple layers of this flame. Remember, I created the base color layer, and then I used the alpha to reveal the flakes on another layer, and then I used the stroke on another layer, and I was able to stamp in pretty much perfect register each of those different layers. But to do that using this particular technique, uh, it's far more difficult to get things in register. And notice also that we're affecting the roughness and the metallic, and in this case, the height and the normal of the channels below, as we did with the standard layer. And remember with the standard layer, we controlled that using a stencil. In this case, we can control it by adding masks to each of the channels that we want to control. So back in Photoshop, I'd have to create a, a height mask or a height map, roughness, metallic, and normal, depending on what I was using and what I wanted to control. And if you do this, this is basically called a material stamp but there is no one single stencil option when using a fill layer. So standard layers and fill layers have some crossover. If I was to turn all of these off, you can see that's basically the same as using a standard layer with just color active. And as I mentioned, the only difference is whether you prefer to stamp on the decal or if you prefer to you know, manually position it using this bounding box. So it pays to know the strengths and the weaknesses of both the standard layers and the fill layers. I think fill layers are probably most useful when you're using black and white images on a mask. I'll show you what I mean. So if I come back to here and just get rid of that and from material mode, just choose some, some Chrome Come back here and choose to add a black mask. Of course, that'll cover everything up. And then come in and stamp onto the mask. So there you go. So we've got a nice sharp mask there and we're revealing that brushed chrome texture. And once again, because this is a fill layer, I've got the option to change that material, uh, adjust the channels that I've got active uh, total flexibility. And I could have come in and basically created the colorization of those flames, you know, the, the yellow and the orange, literally by just using multiple fill layers and just using paint um, and brushes just to paint that in on here. But I, I pretend to like Photoshop for that kind of thing. I find it's a little easier. Just depends how you want to work. You could literally create custom flames directly in Substance Painter. Because remember, Substance Painter and Photoshop have a lot of crossover in that respect. Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. If you have any other techniques or tips that you think uh, might be useful for everyone, please leave those as well. But for now, this is John from MotionWorks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.